Hey everyone, it's Dan, the founder of DataIntuity.com, ex-Google and PayPal data scientist. In this video, I'd like to provide a guide on how do you approach the statistics and probability teasers that are often asked in the quantitative assessment of the data scientist interviews at top companies like Meta, um, Amazon, Apple, Google, and various other startups. Now, these are type of um, questions that basically assess your understanding of fundamental topics such as statistics and probability as a way to approach a very tricky um, type of problems. Now, I just wanna mention that this is also a preview in terms of a new course that is going to be launching on datainterview.com, which is going to focus on the statistics and probability teaser. So that way you as a candidate can be well prepared for data scientist interviews. So make sure you check out datainterview.com and stay tuned with the latest announcements that are gonna be made. Now, without further ado, let's do a deep dive on how do you approach the probability and statistics teasers. So I wanna start off the guide by walking through the key concepts that you need to know in preparation for the data scientist interviews. So there are a couple things that you need to know in terms of statistics. You definitely need to know how to calculate the expectation, variance, covariance, and correlation. You need to know random variables and distributions such as uniform, Bernoulli, binomial, geometric, Poisson, and normal. You have to know conditional probability, um, calculating and using a Bayes theorem. And you also have to know um, joint distributions. When you're walking, working with multiple distributions, how do you go about calculating the probability of a certain outcome given that you have two distributions? Now, keep in mind that these uh, concepts are not the entire list of all the things that you need to know for, uh, for all of the you know, types of problems that you're gonna encounter out there, um, but if we were to think about Pareto's law, which is basically focusing on 20% that brings the 80% result, these topics are, are very common in the statistics and the probability teaser. So as long as you do a deep dive and focus on these, for the most part, you'll be able to um, answer and ace the statistics and probability teasers. Okay, so in terms of the types of problems that you would encounter, it's based on three topics. So statistics, casino probability, and applied probability. So uh, there's the, the, so the type of problems that use statistics basically involve um, concepts such as, you know, deriving the expectation or the variance or the correlation of something. And then the casino probability is somewhat straightforward. So these are um, the type of problems that you would have encountered when you took probability of one-on-one -on -one course. So these could be based on die roll, coin toss, um, card counting, and then applied probability uses a similar concept as casino probability in, in the sense that you're basically calculating um, conditional probability using Bayes' theorem, except this time around, you're basically going to apply it in some real life kind of situation. So it could be like, you know, calculating that um, a patient has cancer given that this person has been tested positive. Uh, so these are the types of problems that you would encounter when you are in the quantitative um, portion of the data scientist interview. Now, in terms of how the interviewer evaluates a candidate's response, they're looking for qualities. So they want to see how accurately you can produce a response. So, um, you know, when it comes to these sort of mathematical based problems, there's really no like open ended solution, right? It's like a closed end. You're either right or wrong. Uh, so they're looking for the accuracy of whether you produce the right response or not. And they're looking for the completeness as well. So instead of just saying what the correct answer is, can you walk through the step from the beginning to the end? Can you show the thought process? And they're really looking for this completeness or the substance of your response. And they're looking for speed as well. How quickly can you provide a response? And then communication is also very important. So it doesn't matter if you get the correct answer, you also have to be able to explain it really well to the interviewer in terms of what your thought process was. So these are the four qualities you should definitely think about as you are in the, uh, during the interview itself um, as a way to ace the, uh, this type of interview. Now the next step of the guide is to walk through two example problems. One is on statistics, another is one casino probability. In order to really effectively use this video for your preparation, um, as I introduce the question, pause the video for three to five minutes 
and actually try to solve this problem on your own on a sheet of paper and then resume the video and think and go through you know what my solution is um, and definitely comment below if you have any questions um, comment what your solution is I'd definitely be interested to hear um, you know how you approach this problem okay so let's start with the first problem um, a product is launched for a thousand people each day only 10 people can see it what's the average number of waiting days for a person to see the new product so this problem in order to think about this we have to first of all kind of digest this a little bit so we know that there are a thousand people and each day only 10 people can see it what does that mean so it means that once a product is launched not all of the thousand people are going to see it all at once it's going to be shown in batch okay so if we think about you know how long it takes for all thousand people to see it given that only 10 uh, people can see it per day that's a total of 100 people 100 days right so we can kind of also think about this in terms of like a table like day one day two all the way to day 100 and so when we sort of flesh this out we know that the first 10 people the number of waiting days is going to be zero because on the day that this product is launched um, basically they don't the first 10 people do not have to wait and so the number of waiting days is going to be zero and then on the second day day two um, the next 10 people they would have essentially had to wait one day or 24 hours right and then on day three they would have had to, the next 10 people would have had to wait you know um, two days so you keep doing this all the way through the last day which is the day 100 the number of days that the last 10 people would have had to wait are 99 days so this is very important because we're not going to take the average from the days the number of uh, number of days itself rather we're going to take the average by um, taking the weighted averaging of the waiting days and the number of people that are assigned to each of the waiting days and so if we were to flesh this out you know and try to calculate this right then we essentially end up with this expression where each 10 you know basically rep and the numerator here represents the number of people and then the value from 0 1 all the way to 99 rep basically represents the waiting days and then the denominator the 1000 represents the um the number of people that are going to see the product right but you know in a lot of these sort of um, interview settings you're not going to give in a ti-83 calculator you're not going to be given um any sort of you know a tool as a way to calculate this so you have to use mental math and um you know solving this in an arithmetic way it's going to take a long time right um adding up, adding the values up from one one to you know a zero to 99 that's that can take quite a bit of a long time so you need to find some shortcuts here right uh, but before we do let's just kind of simplify this so we know that the common denominator for the numerator and the denominator is going to be 10 so if we factor out 10 we're going to essentially end up with 0 all the way to 99 divided by 100 right so how can we simplify this math right well let's think about this what if you were to pair up the first the beginning values with the last value right if you were to pair up the value 1 and the 99 it is going to be 100 what about if you pair up value 2 and then 98 it is going to be 100 if you pair up 3 and 97 that once again that is going to be 100 so if you think about this if you pair up the values in the beginning and the and, and the end of this series one through um you know, 99 essentially you have multiple of these 100 pairs specifically what you have are 49 of these 100 pairs with the last value which is 50 just sort of kind of being a standalone because you don't have any other value to pair that against so if you were to take 49 times 100 plus 50 and you divide that by 100 that makes the math very simple and that is going to be 4950 divided by 100 and essentially what you end up with is 49.5 waiting days so that takes 49.5 waiting days for a person to see the new product okay so let's dive into the next problem which involves the casino probability suppose you randomly pick a fair coin or bias coin both sides tails what's the chance that coin is biased given that five flips were tails in order to solve this problem once again let's you know 
um, dissect this, right? So you randomly picked a fair coin or biased coin, both sides tails. Um, and right off the bat, we have to think about, okay, is it equally likely, right? If you have to, if you're blindfolded and you were gonna pick a fair coin or a biased coin, is there an equally likely chance that you're going to pick one of these coins, right? And if it is equally likely, then it's gonna be 50-50 um, chance. And we're gonna assume that it is going to be 50-50 chance. And of course, you can clarify that with the interviewer and ask that, you know, ask, right? So 50-50 chance. And the second key information is that the coin is biased, right? One of the coin is biased, and this biased coin has um, tails in both sides. So what that basically means is that if you toss, so if you toss a regular coin, right, you could get a head, you could get a tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, and so forth, right? So there's always that 50 50 chance that you're either gonna get a head or a tail if you were to pick a fair coin. But for this biased coin, it's tails on both sides. So it doesn't matter however you toss it, you're always gonna get tails all the way. So you're gonna get 100% probability that you'll get tails and then 0% probability that you're gonna get heads. So this information is very important. And we have to be able to calculate what's the chance that coin is biased given that five flips were tails. Okay, so how do we go on about setting this up? So we know that this is going to involve some sort of conditional probability, right? So we want to calculate what is the probability that a coin is biased? What is the probability that you pick a, a biased coin given the outcomes, which is outcomes that were observed, which is that in five tosses, you've only got tails. So we're gonna set up with the following expression, which is that probability of bias given five tails. And if you recall, um, you know, probability 101, and I just want to sort of, you know, mention this as a caveat that in this video, I'm not going to obviously go through all the basic things in terms of like, you know, base term, those sort of things. Um, those are, will be included as like lessons um, in the upcoming probability course on datantv.com. But for the sake of example, you know, this exercise, I'm just kind of, kind of lightly touch on some of these key topics here, right? So, when we break this down, the um, you, we can break this down using Bayes' theorem. So we can express this in the following manner, which is that the probability of getting um, bias given five tails is equal to the probability of five tails given bias coin times the probability of choosing a bias coin divided by the probability of observing five tails, right? So we can further break this down each of these three components. The, uh, in the numerator, you got the probability of five tails given bias, and then probability of bias, and then the probability of tails. And we're gonna individually um, basically solve the probability of, of these together, put them together, and then we'll compute what the final probability is. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, there's the equally likely outcome, and then there's the different probability of getting tails depending on what coin you pick, right? So. Um, so I want to, so it helps to kind of flesh this out in, in terms of like a decision tree. So if you pick a coin, there's a 50% chance that you picked a biased coin and then 50% chance you picked a tail, uh, you picked a fair coin. And if you pick a biased coin, there's a 50%, there's a hundred percent chance that you picked a tail. Um, and then a 0% chance that the coin toss resulted in a head. If you picked a fair coin, there's a 50, 50 chance that you either have a head or tail. So this is important because it's gonna help us uh, get the numerator, right? So what is the probability of getting five tails given that it is a biased coin? Well, it doesn't matter how many to tosses we're, we're flipping, whether it's one toss, three toss, 100 tosses, we know that this biased coin will always have tails on both sides, so therefore the probability is going to be 1.0. Now, what about the probability of getting a bias, of, of choosing a biased coin? So it's equally likely that you're gonna pick either the, um, you know, basically the fair coin or, or a biased coin. So in this case, the this probability is going to be 0.5. What about the denominator? So this is a little bit of the tricky part, and once again, you're gonna to have to know some basics about um, about how to compute this. But basically, in order to solve this um, part, you have to think about the law of total probability. So you're using, you're essentially using the weighted um, probability of basically the, um, of, of choosing the tails, uh, choosing the bias coin and choosing the fair coin um, with the corresponding conditional probability as a way to get this final probability, which is going to be probability getting five tails. 
And so the law of, um, and so using the law of total probability, we can express this in the following manner, which is that the probability of getting five tails is equal to the probability of getting of choosing a fair coin times the probability of choosing five tails given a fair coin, plus the probability of choosing a biased coin times the probability of five tails given a pick a biased coin. And when we plug in a bunch of values, um, actually, and just before that, um, so we know what most of these components are, right? So we know that the probability of choosing a fair coin is going to be 0.5, probability of choosing a biased coin is going to be 0.5, point probability of choosing five tails given biased coin is going to be going to be 1.0, which we had already solved. But what about the probability of choosing five tails given that it is a fair coin? So in order to solve this uh, part, you have to think about it in terms of a binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution deals with a binary outcome of how many successes can you have in a given trial? What is the probability of getting K success given that you have N trials? And I'm not going to mention the formula here, but if you were to kind of plug in the formula, uh, plug it in, in the formula and, you know, just Google search it. Essentially, what you end up with is the following expression, which is that um, the probability of getting five tails given bear coin is that it is 0.5 times um, multiplied by the um, raised to the power of five. And so when we plug in this uh, value into basically back to this original um, you know, base theorem, right? We get the following in the numerator and the denominator. And you just convert that 0.5 into one half because essentially what you're going to get is like a fraction, a very simple, elegant fraction, which is 32 divided by 33. And it makes sense that this probability of getting five tails, um, um, you know, uh, basically the probability of getting, a, of choosing a bias coin is, 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 you know, 32 divided by 33. Because the thing is that, you know, if you got five tails, you know, what are the odds of, choosing a, a uh, you know, getting an outcome with five tails, unless the coin, unless one of the coin that you pick is always going to result in five tails. So the more tails that you're observing, more likely that you had actually ended up picking a biased coin. So there you have it guys. So this is an example, like a walkthrough in terms of how do you approach the statistics and probability teasers, along with two example problems on how do you, um, on, on these type of problems. Um, definitely check out datainterview.com and stay tuned with the latest course offerings that are, that are going to be launched. I'm going to have a bulk, a bulk of these type of statistics and probability teasers. So that way you as a candidate can be well prepared for data scientist interviews. And also check out um, you know, coaching services. You can pair up with me as your, um, you know, basically an interviewer and I'll personalize an interview for you based on your upcoming interview, whether it's Meta, Google, and so forth. And I'll give you the solutions all along with the personalized feedback and tips that are gonna be really helpful, um, you know, in terms of acing your interview. So check out datainterview.com and subscri subscribe and like this video um, if you like this and um, stay tuned in the next upcoming content. Peace out.